Hi friends, my name is Al, or Little Star Nerd. Welcome to today's video. We are going back to the absolute classic today. I've got a textured gesso board. We're gonna do a portrait, because I love portraits. I've been going on a whole journey with portraits this year. We won't talk about it right now, but I, I was really itching to do one because I saw the Little Mermaid movie. I personally really liked it, and I personally adore Halle Bailey as Ariel. Obsessed, she played you know, empty behind the eyes so incredibly well. Um, also, I'm just kind of obsessed with her face and she's beautiful. So we're gonna paint her, cause why not? Again, pulling out the classic fave materials. I'm using acrylic paint, brushes, <laughs> um, and we're just, we're gonna do a portrait. I do also wanna thank my patrons for sponsoring this video. Your names are on screen. I feel like every month I am loving Patreon more and more and more, and I'm getting so excited to kind of grow and do different things with it. Like the other day I asked for a critique on something because I was really stumped and I'm loving the feedback that I'm getting and it's just so cool that I have a community where I can do that. It's much more tight knit so I get to know you guys better and I get to actually have conversations and it's just really, really fun. This video should be going out before July ends so I can show you the rewards for July. We've got a little Yeehaw doggy sticker and a, I don't know what these are called, a landscape. <laughs> And this is also a postcard and I believe it's functional. I don't know. But yeah, every month there's a postcard, a sticker, a podcast. I like post early access art stuff. There's also an exclusive video every month and the videos are always really fun because I kind of get to do different things. I'm talking about this for a long time. Basically check out my Patreon if you haven't already. I'm having a lot of fun with it and the support means so, so much to me. Patreon is a huge part of me being able to do this full time and hopefully continue to do it full time and be able to support myself. So if you you know want to support me and you want me to keep doing this, please check out my Patreon. The lowest tier is five dollars. There's also one dollar memberships on YouTube. <laughs> Again, I got it for too long. Anyways, let's get into this portrait. Oh, also, wait, look at my new shirt. First of all, slay. Anyways, uh, let's get into the portrait painting process. Let's go. So as I said, I just recently saw The Little Mermaid. I wasn't really planning on seeing it in theaters because I had heard and seen some pretty lame stuff about it. And I, I didn't really want to waste like money on a ticket because movie theater tickets are expensive and I am cheap. But so I figured I was just gonna wait until it came out on Disney Plus to see it. But then I got the Regal like subscription thing where you know you get unlimited movies, you pay a price for a month. So I was like, you know what, why not go see it, right? Like it's gonna technically be free, just go watch it. And one thing about me is that I love The Little Mermaid. <laughs> I love Ariel. I watched that tape on repeat when I was a little kid. I fully, truly believed that mermaids were real. Like I was fully obsessed, fully. I wanted to be airy, like I loved The Little Mermaid. So I was both super excited and honestly super nervous to see this movie, which is kind of where some of the apprehension to see it in theaters came in. I didn't want to spend money to be disappointed. And you know what? Like I'm, I'm so glad that I did go see it in theaters. It was so fun. There were definitely some interesting choices. I personally found everything about the scene in Ursula's lair to be so disappointing. That was one of my favorite, most satisfying scenes in the cartoon. Ariel's transformation, the way Ursula uses like the lip Stick, it was the, the little souls, seaweed souls, like all of it so good. None of it was in the live action. I'm annoyed. But overall, overall, it was really fun and really good. Well, I won't say really good, it was good. I didn't have any doubts about Halle Bailey. I thought she was great casting, but like watching just proved that anyone else's issues with like that casting just came from racism and racism alone, which was just really annoying to watch because like she was, I think she was literally perfect casting. Her voice was so spot on, like truly for the first song, I thought she was just lip syncing to the original for a minute because her, her singing was so good. I also loved, I didn't think I was gonna like the animation choices for making the animals realistic. I actually loved Flounder and Sebastian. D didn't love Scuttle. We don't need to talk about Scuttle. Um, and er you know, Eric was, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Eric, but I did ironically love his high school musical moment and dance. Um, that was really fun. It was giving very much Troy Bolton. Anyways, that's, that's my movie review, okay? You know, four stars, go see it. <laughs> But after seeing that movie, I did become a bit of a Halle Bailey stan. I stalked her on Instagram, 
She has so many amazing photos and her face is beautiful. I really like her face. So I was like, yeah, obviously I'm, I'm gonna need to paint her. She has a, a painting face, not necessarily a drawing face, but I really wanted to paint her face. And then of course I waited a month. And now we're here. I've been really itching to do a portrait lately. You guys know I love my portraiture. And you also might know that I've gone on a bit of a journey <laughs> with them for the past year or so. Um, and in this video, we'll talk a bit about that um, and about how, we're also gonna talk about how I, I pick colors for portraits because it's been a very popular question lately. So without further ado, let's get into it. I've considered my portraits to be, I, I say this all the time, but I think it's so funny. I consider portraits to be my bread and butter for a while. And a few years ago, it was definitely what I would say was like my main thing. And that's definitely changed as I've grown as an artist and just been more willing to try new things and get out of my own comfort zone. I just really enjoy experimentation. I'm personally not super worried about making work that I don't know, like looks like a collection or like it's all in the same style. You know, I don't feel like I need a concentration or to stick to one subject or, or anything like that, you know? I'm not super concerned with my like artistic identity. <laughs> I'm good with doing whatever I feel like doing and, and learning from that as I go. So I've definitely strayed a lot from portraiture and because of that, I've definitely found it to be less exciting and interesting. Like I've, I literally, when I say started with portraiture, I mean back when I was eight and I started taking like classes, um, I, that's all I did was portrait after portrait after portrait. So I've been doing portraits since I was eight and it wasn't until I was about like 20 or 21 that I really started branching out. And so obviously doing something new after 10 something years of doing the same thing, it, it seemed a little more boring. I've been working on trying to reconnect with it and find it more fun and all that stuff. And it's it's been working really well. You know, I'm not suddenly cranking out Gorder's portrait after Gorder's portrait, but they no longer feel like something I'm weirdly obligated to do. They no longer feel boring or tedious. I think it also plays into one of my goals for this year, which was to take my time and put more effort into my art. I think that's really helped me see all of my art differently. I feel like I approach everything with the mentality that it's something that I want to make, something I'm excited about. It's a chance to do the thing I'm passionate about and enjoy so much, which makes the process itself like more enjoyable, straight up. Like for this piece, I had so, so much fun doing it because before I started, I reminded myself how much I genuinely just love painting, like the act of painting. And you know, when I do that, when I prime myself with that thought, I do have much more fun than on paintings where I feel like it never ends. And it's a constant battle because it's more of a chore or an obligation to do this painting rather than, oh my gosh, I love painting. Does that make sense? I feel like I recently had an epiphany. I was watching um, a video by Maria Cecil and she, she said like, I just love painting. I was like, you know what, so do I. And it reminded me like, oh yeah, I enjoy what I do. And it's really changed the way that I approach working on things, going in with like, oh my gosh, I'm excited to do this thing that I like to do. Anyways, I've definitely made progress with my enjoyment of portraits. Like I said, it's not like I'm doing them all the time now. And I think that's a huge part of why I am able to enjoy them again. I think they were just starting to feel a bit overdone and boring for me. I was kind of just picking a random Pinterest portrait and cranking it out once a week. And I was just bored of doing the same thing over and over. I was getting lazy and sloppy. So they were starting to look bad and weird and ugly because I just didn't really care about doing them, which made them look bad, which made me care less, etc., etc. It was a spiral, a cycle. I'm trying to be just a bit pickier about the portraits I do. I try to do them when I want to do them like today or you know this month or whatever, this painting, I felt particularly inspired to paint Halle Bailey. If I haven't seen a face that's like, oh, I wanna paint that person, and I'm looking specifically for a reference photo because I want to do that, you know, I try to pick photos that genuinely speak to me and excite me, things that I know I would enjoy doing, whether they're in my comfort zone or not. And I try to approach each one like it's new to me, like an opportunity to learn something. Instead of going in thinking I'm going to do the same exact thing as last time, because I have, you know, this general technique I use every time. I start off with that, you know, and then I go get to this point where it's like, okay, how can I do it better this time? What can I try that's different? I want to experience each individual painting and piece as its own journey rather than, I don't know, like an obvious step that I have to take. And I think I definitely did that today. 
I normally do most of the skin in a flat brush and then pull out the round thin brush for detail on top of all that. But today I went crazy with the round brush and got really into blending everything out and getting lots of detail and being very meticulous. It was pretty different to my usual techniques and it was, it was a very fun change of pace. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I'm really happy with the progress that I've made on that front. There's a lot of things similar to portraiture that I'm trying to work on having a better relationship with. I definitely have to remind myself now and then that, you know, my relationship with art and every aspect of it will constantly be evolving and changing, obviously. So I've definitely shifted my goals from, you know, perfecting my abilities or perfecting my relationships to just having like a general positive feeling towards things. <laughs> Like, I don't need to feel 100% great about all of my portraits all of the time. But I do generally want to think of portraiture fondly. You know what, does that make sense? I do want to enjoy the act of making a portrait. I want to do it from time to time, and I want to mostly like most of the portraits I make. And that's how I feel about a lot of things now. I don't have to have it all figured out, but I do want to be open to everything as an artist, and I want to generally enjoy all of those things. I guess what I'm saying is I don't want there to be anything that I dread or avoid doing. I don't want to see things as obstacles or fears or weaknesses, but rather I just want to look at everything as like, okay, sure, let's do it. Like, this is fun. I don't really know how to explain it, but I, I want to stop having these blocks and I don't want to treat those blocks as a puzzle that I have to solve or some problem with a singular prize at the end and there's one route to get through it. I just want to, and I don't, you know, there's, certain things that I really enjoy doing, but I don't have to do those things all the time. I feel like we all get really trapped in, wrapped up in our artist's identity and like what makes us an artist? I'm really trying to let go of that and just do it all. Do it all some of the time and enjoy most of it, if that makes sense. I don't know. But anyways, let's move on to color selection for traditional portraits. For some reason, I've been getting that question a lot lately. I don't know where this came from. Um, I mean, I've gotten that question my entire time doing them, but like it's been a lot lately. And, and I do have a video on how I pick colors. It's an old video. It's not specific to portraits. And like I said, it's, it's very old. I don't even know what I say in that video. I literally have no idea. You can go watch it, but I, I don't even know if it's relevant. I may also just restate what I said in that video. I don't know. So I'm big on artist intuition. I wasn't technically like formally trained in any way. I have no actual art education. I didn't even take any classes in college. I took art throughout high school and I did have a private teacher, but all that really means is I and a bunch of other kids sat in her studio and used her supplies. And every once in a while, she would teach us some like very valuable lessons. So I have some knowledge, but overall, I don't even really know what I know. Therefore, I just go with what my gut tells me most of the time, which of course does make it really hard to pass on that knowledge to other people. I think before I even get into my explanation, a huge piece of advice I have for people is to experiment and just do like fun stuff. Like just guess and try new things and don't be afraid of getting crazy with it. That's where a lot of my learning came from was just getting that experience and consequential feedback. So don't just use this or any other video as a template, as you know, a, a one-stop shop. Also go out and get your own experience to you know, train your own intuition because that's where that intuition comes from. So like I said, it's a lot of following my gut. I know very little about color theory and yet I still know a lot about color theory. The basics of color theory aren't just rules that you have to memorize and follow, they're like actual working visible principles. You can understand as an artist intuitively why certain colors look good together or portray a certain emotion or situation without having to take a class on it or having that rule explained to you. Obviously it's beneficial to have that background of knowledge, but like you don't need formal training to understand what primaries are. Over time, just experimenting and absorbing information when I can, I've learned that there are certain color combos I love to use to communicate certain emotions or settings. Like I know I love warm yellow sun and cool blue shadows, which works on the color wheel and also scientifically is a principle of light and shadow. Generally, warm light causes cool shadow and vice versa. I've also picked up a lot of color cues just from observing the world around me. I've always been big into color and that's what I look for in things. That's genuinely how my brain operates when viewing the world. 
A great example is I've always loved the way the sun casts this like blue green shadow on pavement and sidewalk when I go on walks. And I love to include that when it's relevant in my pieces. But let's talk specifically about faces cause that's what we're here for. Like I said, I love color. I love to exaggerate, not necessarily on purpose because I want it to like be crazy colorful, but because that's how I visually understand the references I'm looking at. When I'm looking at a photo of a face, of course I see all the planes and structures, but I'm often really focused on like color matching because that's like, to me, like that's how I'm, it did, you know, explaining the information, I'm recreating the photo color by color, inch by inch. I'm trying to understand how to make the color I'm seeing. And I get so zeroed in on that color that I'm looking at that one specific spot that I no longer see it as one tone amongst many to make up one uniform plane of skin but rather as its own entity. And as a result, a mild green undertone around the mouth may end up being a bright green splotch of color. This is usually pretty visible when I use things like colored pencils, especially in my old work, where I can easily layer to punch that back down a bit. But with things like paint, it's usually a bit less obvious because I'm mixing that into the overall skin tone, but it's definitely still there. It's definitely evident in my 20 portraits in two weeks challenge, which is pretty old, where I was speed running all those portraits and they are very colorful and not very blended. My colors also tend to get a bit more exaggerated and bright because I often feel like they're not bright enough. As I'm painting or drawing, I stare at a picture for a long time, trying to recreate it throughout the entire process. And I stare at my piece for a long time, wondering you know, how well I'm doing. After a while, I get a little blind to what I'm really looking at. And as I put my colors down, I keep wondering like, geez, like why do these look so dull? Why doesn't this look exciting and cool and bright to me? It's probably because my eyes are tired of looking at it. But to me, I'm thinking my colors aren't bright enough. And so I keep adding color to make it more and more vibrant until I step back and my portrait maybe looks a little crazy. But I've learned that I really like that. I love my portraits to be colorful and beautiful and lively and vibrant because to me, that's what people look like. So when it comes to choosing colors for portraits, I love to have those really fun, vibrant colors at the ready. Of course, as I've gotten more experienced and a bit better and you know more into my ways and methods and techniques, that's been toned down just a bit. With today's painting, I think having that really bright green background really helped to remind me, you know what I mean? To keep wanting to push the saturation and vibrancy of my colors. Almost everything is going to look really dull on top of or next to a neon. So if you need some help pushing your colors, exaggerating them, I would definitely recommend starting with a bright or neon base coat. Anyways, like I said, in general, my portraits are a bit more toned down than they used to be. My palette, specifically talking paint here, is always built off basic primaries and neutrals, the building blocks of flesh tones, basically. This also goes hand in hand with things like markers where I pull out specific markers that I always use for skin tones, which are generally the skin tone pinks to brown colors. Back to paint, um, there's always white, a dark brown like burnt umber, red, yellow, yellow ochre, maybe an orange if a portrait calls for it, I think this one did, and a darker blue. I found that with those colors, I can mix pretty much any skin tone. However, those colors aren't always fun. <laughs> I love adding a teal, a neon pink or orange, and a light blue to my palette, and other fun colors with the purpose of punching up those undertones. The neon pink or orange really comes in handy I love feeling that rosiness and life in a person's skin, but I struggle to achieve that with regular primaries. It never feels bright or lively or rosy enough. That's probably because I have to work on my tube colors and how they interact when mixing, but I found that adding that neon in helps tremendously with adding that punch of color. Of course, you do have to be mindful of light fastness. I personally don't really care right now. Um, I'm not making paintings with the purpose of them lasting. I'm making paintings with the purpose of enjoying them now. So I personally don't really care yet. And honestly, that's kind of it. From there, obviously it's different with other mediums, but generally the principles are the same. I have a set of like neutrals and like realistic tones. And then I have a handful of non-realistic tones, like undertones that I exaggerated colors that I use and I use them hand in hand. 
if colors are layerable or a medium is layerable, then I start with the really saturated colors and I layer the more muted colors or realistic colors on top. If those, if I'm using supplies that mix together like paints, then I mix them together. Literally, I try to punch up my regular tones with those more exaggerated colors. And, and like, that's it. I don't really know what else to say. From there, it's just being adventurous and having fun and identifying the colors you see. Obviously, that's a big part of it. When you go throughout a portrait, don't just use brown because the person has brown skin. Don't just do things because your brain tells you that's what you're supposed to do. Really look at your reference. Maybe the reflections on the skin are very blue tinted. Maybe the shadows are very purple. Don't be afraid to use those colors. You know, don't do brown mixed with black to make a darker brown for shadows. Use the colors that you're really, really looking at. Be bold, be experimental, enjoy messing around. Overall, there's no real science to me choosing my colors. I just look at my reference and do the best I can like with the palette that I have. And generally, I just try to represent every single color I see, even if it's totally overdoing it and I'm the only one who even sees the color in the first place. I hope you found that helpful. It's so hard to explain to other people and I feel like so much of it is just me guessing. Not to mention, when you get into the zone, it's really hard to even understand yourself, why you did what you did. At this point, the way that I choose and mix and understand colors is so deeply, deeply ingrained in my process I'm not even sure I fully understand how I do it. Please feel free to ask any questions down below, you know, clarifying questions about how I choose my colors and about my process when doing that. I feel like when I do these kinds of videos, I don't even really know what you wanna know. You know what I mean? What information is actually helpful. So I probably miss stuff that you might actually wanna know, questions that you have. And I probably gave a bunch of information that was totally useless. Anyways, that's, that's really all I have to say about that. I, th I think, I'm not sure. I hope that was different than the last video I made about picking colors, I don't know. But like I said, if you have questions, ask them. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this painting. Okay. <laughs> does she look bad reversed? What does she look like in my viewfinder? I think it's okay, I can't really tell. I kept the green background, which I feel like is bold, but I do like it. In the viewfinder, it's not cute. In real life, I like it. I'm super happy with this. I don't wanna keep jinxing myself, but again, in my slay era, I just really like it. I don't know if it's, like, can you tell it's her? Like, can you tell that it's Halle Bailey? I don't know, let me know, like, the accuracy, the realistic, uh, like, whether or not it looks like her. But as a painting, you know, I think it's good. I'll also have the post linked down below. Um, for proper like photo creds and stuff. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. I really got into it. Normally I don't do nearly as much blending, but I got really in the zone, I was really enjoying myself. And I think it shows. I think it just looks like a portrait that I had fun with. So I'm very, very happy. Uh, though, yet again, I have another painting that I, <laughs> I don't really know what to do with. I have, nothing to, I have nothing to do with it. I don't know where it's gonna go. But yeah, that's that. I really don't have much else to say. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my Patreon if you haven't already. Go watch all my other videos, just for funsies. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, the whole shebang. You know what to do. I'll see you next time. Go watch The Little Mermaid. Genuinely good, okay? A little camp, a little silly. Ignore Aquafina. Genuinely good, okay? <laughs> go pet your animal and go to smart. <laughs>